Good morning, everybody. Happy day six of me cooking my way through Magnolia Tables Cookbook. This recipe is actually from volume two today because I really wanted to challenge myself and make a bread from scratch, and this one had a ton of great bread recipes. So today we're making focaccia bread. So the first half of this is going to be getting the dough together. So in a separate bowl, a small bowl, you're gonna take one fourth of that warm water that you already measured out, pop it into the bowl, and now this recipe calls for one one fourth ounce packet of active dry yeast. If you don't have the packets and you have this container like I do, it the measurements work out to two and one fourth teaspoon of yeast. So one of the one fourth packets if you have the packets or two teaspoons plus one fourth teaspoon if you have this container like I do of active dry yeast. Once you've got that measured out and plopped into the warm water, you're gonna get one tablespoon of sugar and you're gonna add that as well. Now we're gonna let this sit for about five minutes to the side until it gets foamy. When I was in Hawaii with my family and with Stephanie and her mom, we had this incredible, and I mean like mouth-watering focaccia bread our last night at dinner. It was beautiful, it was like had salt and rosemary and the olive oil was like incredible. So that's really why I'm recreating this. <laughs> so while that's rising and getting a little bit like fluffy on top we're going to do our dry ingredients so you're going to want to do five cups of bread flour so this is a lot of bread flour i'm probably going to fast forward through this part for you guys because it took a long time to measure out the ingredients but yeah five cups of this bread flour so once you've gotten all five cups of this bread flour into the bowl you're going to go ahead and start adding some of your other dry ingredients you're gonna to need to do your salt next. So you're gonna do one tablespoon of kosher salt, the flaky kind, <laughs> and then you're gonna add that in there. And to this, you're just gonna go ahead and whisk a little bit to get those kind of a little bit all combined while we're still waiting for the yeast to rise. Whisk away, girl. Oh my gosh, that was a heavy sigh, Hank. All right, so now that the yeast is ready, you're gonna go ahead and combine that with the flour mixture. So we're gonna do our wet ingredients. So put the yeast mixture in, and then you're also gonna go ahead and add your um, one and a half cups warm water that was left over, and you're gonna do half a cup of olive oil. You're gonna do the remaining two tablespoons of sugar. <clears throat> and then we're kind of finding ourselves in the same predicament that we were in yesterday because we still do not have that mixer because I still haven't started an OnlyFans and we had to do this by hand. So, ugh. again, lots of arm workouts, um, lots of mess. So get those all together. And then I started with a whisk and then I immediately, after I cut this out, took away the whisk because it was not working. And I grabbed like a huge industrial spatula and really like beat that dough into submission. So here's what it would look like after you, you know, put all your sweat and tears into it. So you're gonna wanna, get that out of the bowl and spray it with like an olive oil type spray. And then you're gonna pop the dough back in there. It says to cover it with saran wrap, however, your girl doesn't have saran wrap, so I covered it with foil and then put a cooking towel over it. You're gonna wanna let this sit for about an hour so it can rise, it needs to be in a warm temperature area. And then I'll be back with the second part where we can get this bread going. All right, you guys, it has been an hour. We're about to do the reveal. Wow, she's definitely doubled in size. So at this point, you're going to go ahead and put this to the side and get your pan that you're gonna be actually making the bread in and put about two tablespoons of olive oil into it. It says to do a 17 by 13 inch pan. I have no idea. I definitely don't think that this is the size, but it is the closest thing I got. So we're working with what we have here. We're making you know, exceptions, <laughs> then then you're going to want to punch your dough. Um, olive oil up your hands just a little bit on the front and the back. That way nothing sticks to you. And you're really just going to want to beat that dough. Just bow, 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 bow. Um, make sure you get all the air out. Go through a couple times. Hi, Hank. I'm sorry. Hank's over here. He's like, why are you yelling at the phone? So like I said, you're going to beat this into submission, punch all the air out, and then 
once you've really worked out your aggression you're going to take it and place it over into your other bowl that you've already olive oiled and then you're going to kind of position it to fill the bowl up but not to worry because you're going to let this set and it's going to rise anyways uh, and then it says in here to push your fingers into the dough to create small divots in it so i just did it mostly with my fingers like i said um definitely not a pro bread maker so don't judge me then it says just to loosely cover with saran wrap so we're loosely covering it with foil because like i said i do not have it i do not have the means for that big man ow hank and then yeah then we gotta wait for another hour for it to rise again <laughs> so lots of patience in this recipe kids this is not a one and done all right, you guys, so while we're waiting for the bread to rise for the second time, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the topping that is gonna go on top of the bread before it bakes. So this is a rosemary flaky sea salt focaccia bread, which is actually perfect because that's the exact same topping of the one we had in Hawaii. And have you ever just like eaten something and it instantly triggers like a memory of a moment in time? That's really what I'm hoping this does for me because I need to be in Hawaii right now. I literally cannot be stuck in this house anymore. So I'm hoping this takes me back. So you're gonna, like I said, chop this up really nice. Give it like a medium, medium to fine chopping. And then what we're gonna do is mix in the tablespoon of coarse flaky sea salt. Obviously, if you don't like as much salt or less or as much rosemary, use less or more, depending on what you want, but this is what the recipe called for. So then here I am just adding, oh, excuse you, sorry, Hank burped. So here I am just adding in the sea salt to the rosemary mixture, and then I'm just letting that sit to the side and hang out while I continue waiting patiently for this second round of bread to rise. All right, so while we're waiting for the bread to get ready, I thought we could have a word from our sponsors. Hank, Rosé, do you have anything to say? Oh, is that all? Nothing else? Okay, I love you too. All right, so back to the cooking. So the, <laughs> the bread is clearly ready. I poked a couple finger holes in it, or finger divots, and poured some olive oil on there like the recipe called for. And then I covered it with the salt and rosemary mixture. Just make sure that it's evenly coated and it's got enough rosemary and salt on the entire thing. Excuse me? Goodness gracious, my dogs are rude. So anyways, once you've got that evenly coated, I'm sorry if you hear me chewing, I'm actually eating the finished bread and it is, oh my God, like, oh, like, oh my God, it's so good. So this is what it looks like before you pop it in the oven. And this is what it looks like done. You're gonna do it at 425. Mine was ready in 20 minutes and drizzle a little bit of olive oil at the end and cut into it and serve. You're not gonna be sorry. <laughs> 